those daring young men and their flying machines. They go up, up, they go down, down, down. That's an experimental aircraft. Um, in the past, if you wanted to test something, you just did it. Um, now we build drones and just have a person sit on a chair on one and fly them. So let's see what it was like back in the bad old days, the good old days. Uh, well, here we go. Uh, this is a much more conventional version of it. <clears throat> it's got four props. It's basically a four-prop helicopter. So let's look at some more stuff. That's a two-prop I'm assuming, and it was, des well, I don't know, maybe it only has one, I'm actually kind of confused now, uh, it was designed to test lifting, of it, uh, you know, how much lift you could get out of a propeller, and use a, well, I have no clue how this thing was built, to be blunt with you, I'm not going to go look it up, because, on wow, and at that point, if you were a test pilot, every day was an adventure, okay, okay, so this is the one I like the best. It's extremely stable, and that and the fact that it looks like a Briggs & Stratton lawnmower motor running it. Um, <clears throat> the problem with this, and anything even similar to it, was a really simple problem. They either were very stable, which means you were a sitting duck, or they were very unstable, and you were pile-drivered. So that kind of became a problem. They were originally designed for the Atomic Warfare Initiative. Yes, that sounds crazy now. Uh, where you would fly for some reason up in the air to be a shooter and then come back down. The trouble is you were a sitting duck if you were doing that. This one here is an actual U.S. Army version of it. It has two rotors running opposite directions, and that is the fuel, I mean the, the engine there, driving it apparently. And yes, he is standing literally over the top of the props with nothing between him and being... That's a, It's a flying blender. This is the much more sleekly designed uh, version. This is a jet aircraft. The intakes are on the top in those screens, and it had a thrust at the bottom. Like all of them, at least all of them that I've shown you that were where you stand on top of it, you could pretty much pilot the thing by leaning backwards and forwards. It would be very instinctive, but kind of dangerous sometimes. These days, we would outfit it with the AI we use for toy uh, drones, and it'd probably be practical. Um, and you can get the information about this, and you can build one. It's not made unavailable. It's just you're going to have to buy a couple of mini miniature jet engines. You can have one. And the patent information is available directly. Sheet one and two of it. As you can see, it's just it literally was a casing around a jet engine pointed straight down with a little thrust angler. Yes, that sounded wrong. And a fuel tank. It basically just a bigger, well, a, a fairly large jet engine and you could fly it. There are videos on the net of it being used for that. It obviously did work. And they went into some detail with some of this design information here, but the fact is the thing could be driven by a person and was the next up, you know, upgrade from doing the propeller thing. And obviously a whole hell of a lot more safe. But I'm gonna be honest with y'all. This 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 is my ride. I'm sorry, this is what I want to drive. You know, the flying bedsteads are fun, but Seriously, it's a flying saucer the Air Force built. And who in their right mind would say they don't want to fly that? I don't care how dangerous it is, it's freaking cool. And there were variations that used, oh my god, hardcore extra stuff. Uh, like uh, being able to use, apparently, jet engines? Instead of just a prop wash based? Flying pulpit, the Hiller VZ-1 Pawnee. D. Lackner HC-1, the Aerocycle, the YHO-2, DH-4, the Helivector, Williams X-Jet, the Flying Belt they also made. I didn't get a picture of that. we got to find that picture. And, of course, the patent number for the Avrocar as well. Excuse me. For it. And the Avrocar, also the VZ-9. After a pair of crashes, development of the X-Jet was discontinued as it was deemed and inferior to currently existing helicopters, and that was the beginning of the era unmanned drones, drone strikes. I, well, should I quote the Star Wars quote? Items from a bygone era where, well, anyway. The previous prop versions were too difficult to control for operation by infantrymen, and the projects were abandoned, or they were extremely unstable, or worse, extremely stable and wouldn't move from their spot and be influenced by wind and rain and just go off course. You could end up over enemy lines with the engine shutting off. 
but it was an interesting time. May we all live in them again. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.